everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a little short and quick video, or at least it will start out as a short and quick video. I honestly, I almost don't even want to talk about it because I don't want to bring extra attention to a bill that has been advancing in Tennessee without any major controversy. You might remember not too long ago, I did a video on how Georgia was looking to exempt guns, ammo, and accessories from sales tax for a 10 day period every year, a sort of tax holiday for the second amendment. Never mind that the second is the only amendment that is taxed and has a price tag attached, but baby steps. Well, it turns out that there is a bill advancing in Tennessee that would exempt guns and ammo from sales tax completely like, all the time. But before I tell you the full details, Liberty Mom has a bad habit of staying up very late reading after Liberty Toddler goes to bed. And last night was no exception. I was around 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> so today's video is brought to you by my second cup of Blackout Coffee. Blackout is a small batch roaster based out of sunny Florida that roasts everything fresh to order so you get the absolute best freshest coffee. They also partner with several channels like mine and gun rights groups so that you can get coffee you can be proud of. To check them out and help support the channel, go to blackoutcoffee.com slash libertydoll. Also, shout out to any supportive husbands watching whose wives are reading Akatar or have read Akatar. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> Okay, HB 2854 was introduced on January 31st, passed on first and second consideration, and both it and the Senate version are now in committee. The state already exempts gun safes and other safety devices from sales tax, which became law last year. The current bill would amend that law. Tennessee Code Annotated Section 67-6-358A is amended by deleting the language, the retail sale of firearm safes and firearm safety devices, and substituting instead the language, the retail sale of firearms, firearm safes, and firearm safety devices. Section 2, Section B of that code is amended by adding the following as a new appropriately designated subdivision, firearm, a means that any weapon designed, made, or adapted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive or any device readily convertible to that use. And B does not include a firearm that has a barrel greater than an internal diameter of 50 caliber or a shotgun of 10 gauge or smaller, firearm parts or assembly kits, including frames, receivers, barrels, and aftermarket accessories, which is a little lame, but again, baby steps. And section three, this act takes effect July 1st, 2024, the public welfare requiring it. Of course, if it passes. The fact that the state already exempts some gun related items is a pretty good sign, I would say. But while there isn't a ton of media coverage on this bill or people yelling about it, there is a complete opposite competing bill that might have triggered the introduction of this one. The media and gun controllers are calling it the Thoughts and Prayers Bill, HB 2193. That bill would actually introduce a new 15% tax on all retail gun sales in the state. The money from that tax would all go into a Department of Education fund that would staff elementary and secondary schools with school counselors. The sponsor, Rep. Bo Mitchell, a Democrat, claims that the idea came to him from a Republican constituent at a recent town hall meeting who said that a tax on guns would solve the gun problem. Uh. The man claimed to be an avid hunter, Republican, and gun owner. If he's real, he sounds like one of those I believe in the Second Amendment, but people, which really are not helping the cause. As for the 15% number, he is calling it AR 15%. <laughs> Bravo, sir. Bravo. Tongue in cheek, I made it AR 15%, he said. I call it the thoughts and prayers tax. If we're going to do nothing else in this state, we're going to put this taxation into a fund to fund K through 12 mental health counselors for our children. If we don't solve this problem, we're going to need a lot more mental health counselors in our schools, either for the school shooting or for the children who go home and the guns are unsecured at home and they either shoot themselves or their neighbor's children. Which I'd like to remind you all is the smallest percentage of crimes and violence using guns. 
but that doesn't get the media attention. It's either we act or do something, or we're going to have to start taxing to pay for the other problem it's causing. Ah oh, yes, the taxation argument, because all the blue states with all their high taxes are perfect utopias. <clears throat> perfect utopias. Passing it, he said, would give Republicans the opportunity to prove that they care about children. That is a straw man argument if I ever heard one. The state legislature had a special session after the last big mass casualty event where a whole host of bills were introduced, but the Democrats couldn't seem to get anything to stick. Mitchell says that if the legislature can revisit those bills and pass red flag laws and safe storage bills, he'll withdraw the tax bill. And he says, if Republicans pass all of those and an assault weapons ban, he would personally sponsor legislation to remove all sales tax from guns. So a little bit of bribe, a little bit of extortion, no big deal, just politics as usual. Except Senator Crow and Representative Hill have already beat him to it. So like I said, the bills have been moving steadily along. We will see if they actually get to a vote and what happens with that. Like I said about the bill in Georgia, if nothing else, it might inspire some other states to do something similar. All right, gang, that is it for this video. You guys know all of the algorithm things. Please ring that notification bell so that you always get updates from my channel. Leave some comments down below to help with the algorithm. And as always, thanks for tuning in and happy shooting.